What is happening, everybody? Welcome to the Games and Grounds podcast. My name is Sue, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's been a while. It's been a little while. A lot has happened in the last however long it's been since we recorded a podcast. <laughs> long, long time. Yeah, but uh, hey, look. I'm super happy to be doing this. I've been excited. I know we've been sort of talking about it for the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, getting back into recording and putting podcasts out on a regular basis. And you'll, you know, those listening will have noticed the introduction. Yes, this is the Games and Graps podcast. It's WrestleMania season. We thought, you know what? We've missed talking about wrestling. We talk about it in the Discord. So let's just talk about it on the podcast. People miss it. We miss it, so let's just bring it back. We're going to talk about games still anyway, so you might as well just have ridiculously long podcasts that feature both things. Yeah, there's been a lot going on on both sides. <laughs> there, yes, there certainly has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, so, yeah, how are you doing? You good? Yeah, very well, thank you. I'm fe- feeling good. How about yourself? How's how's life as a father? Yeah, it's crazy, you know? It's it's really crazy. It's, he's eight weeks old today. Oh, <laughs> so yeah my son miles he's uh he's eight weeks old today he's doing good he's happy he's healthy um and yeah it's the most crazy rewarding thing that anybody can do yeah i bet it's madness also dude women are absolute superheroes the, the shit that they can do with their bodies like carrying and then pushing out a small child <laughs> that's crazy, absolutely man unbelievable like the biggest feat of superhuman strength i've ever seen in person i know, I know right uh yeah it's good job men don't have to give birth because man we'd give up so easy we'd give up so incredibly easy <laughs> but yeah uh Kay was amazing throughout the whole thing and yeah because of her miles is here all happy and healthy so awesome. shout out to, to Kay, my awesome wife for being awesome and just being an unbelievable superhuman lady and shout out to all the other women who do that as well because it's fucking crazy but yeah yep. being a dad is awesome uh i'm finally sort of starting to get a grip on normality again finding time to do stuff and yeah that's why i'm happy to be to be back doing this because yeah, it's good to be back into a, a routine and and doing stuff and here we are we're we're recording a podcast and i'm, I'm super yeah. super psyched for it yes me too so yes congrats to yourself and Kay. thank and, you and miles Look forward to meeting them someday. Yes, well, yeah. I mean, we'll do WrestleMania at mine. Yeah, that'd be cool. So uh, you'll meet him then. He he probably yeah. won't pay attention to WrestleMania. He didn't pay attention to Elimination Chamber. So oh, lazy. Yeah, I know. He's pretty lazy, <laughs> but he'll get he'll get there one day. He you'll, will you'll be. Make, yeah, you'll make a wrestling fan out of him eventually. Yeah, I will. I, I've I've got a, a tiny United Kingdom Championship that I <laughs> that I put a, it fit perfectly around him. It's like. Right. Okay. This is step one to making you a wrestling fan, young man. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He looked happy when he had it on. So, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll just keep going with it. I said to Kaylee <laughs> earlier on, that, uh, I can't wait until he's old enough for me to do wrestling moves on. <laughs> yeah, the suplexing him, suplexing him across the room. Yeah, she was <laughs> like, "Oh, you're about a year and a half away from that yet." I was like, "Well, we'll see. We'll see." <laughs> WrestleMania season. Here we're getting scoop slammed in the front room. We don't have carpet now. I just scoop slammed him on the floor. Oh, ouch. Yeah, well, hey, look, you got to learn the hard way, okay? It's true, true. The the earlier, the better, you'll learn. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so look, we've got plenty to talk about, so let's just get straight into it. So, Finn, in the last 18 years since we last recorded (laughs) the podcast, what have you been playing? Uh, A few things here and there. Uh, I recently replayed uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, blasted Mm -hmm. through it in no time. I used my uh, New Game Plus save file and to play through it on easy. I'm here for the story. (laughs) <laughs> I skip all the optional stuff. Mm-hmm. How long Refresh did it take? Um, not long. Don't know exactly, but a couple of days, two, three days. I mean, like hours in the game. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what about? Okay. Eight, nine, ten. Okay. It's, it's That's more, not too more bad. Yeah, this stuff for, you know, story stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's that. What else have we been playing? I uh, played the Crisis Core as well, which is the uh, prequel to Final Fantasy Seven. All the Final Fantasy. All the Final Fantasy. So excited for Rebirth. Yeah, it's so like, just got to blast back. through all the all the Final Fantasy stuff. Yeah, came out today. Um, as we're recording this, I've also been playing uh, Ratchet and Clank. Um, the newer one, Rift Apart. Finally, finally. Well, what do you think to it? <laughs> it's really good. It looks incredible. 
It looks yeah. li- literally like a Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. I felt like every gen would say, oh, this game looks like a Pixar movie. But now we're finally here at a generation where it actually looks like <laughs> a proper Pixar movie in game form. Yeah, when, when the Toy Story games came out on the PS1, oh my God, it looks just like a Pixar movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does if a Pixar movie was made on a, a potato. <laughs> exactly. But they were finally here. It looks incredible. Uh, it plays like, you know, a Ratchet and Clank game. I like, yeah. I like the, you know, the, the like, teleporting, the rifts and everything. Mm. Incredible how, you know, how quickly games load these days. Which really. is that's that seamless transition in between worlds. I think I, mm. it, it absolutely blew my mind. And um, have you played Spider Man yet? Spider Man 2? Yeah, yeah. I played through Spider Man. Yeah. So you could see sort of like what they've taken from Ratchet and Clank and put into Spider Man 2 as well. Yeah. Um, and it, again, it, it works well there also. But yeah, Ratchet and Clank uh, Rift Apart is so, so, so good. Yeah. Very cool. Great game. I put it finished Easy that tonight. too. Yep, he's Batman. That's it. It's uh, a bonus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what else? Played through Mario Wonder. Okay. On the Switch, which is brilliant. Love that. It's yep, great. Game. Really, really good. Yeah, probably the best Mario, Super Mario game. Ooh. 2D Mario game. Whatever. Um, probably. It's, it's, it's done so much with it. Uh, we've had like the new Super Mario Brothers style 2D game for so long. Mm-hmm. It's starting to wear thin a bit. Now they've completely revamped it. Um, a whole new, you know, our star is fantastic. The pa- new power ups are amazing. You know, the wonder, you know, the wonder levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so everything, the music, everything's like so good. How did Nintendo make their own games just look and play so great on Switch? And yet everything else that comes out on Switch now just seems to run like complete and utter crap. Yeah, right. Like the Pokemon games. That's like, like the Pokemon games. Yeah, look, look terrible. Look like a GameCube game. Yep. Barely. Um but the, the best looking Pokemon game on Switch is the Let's Go Pikachu slash Eevee one. Everything else is looks absolutely awful. Yeah, it's the same. It's like PS2 Hopefully. game. It does, yeah. If if that some of the some regards it looks worse than a PS2 game. Like some of the yeah. characters. Also, it's like to take some pride in this ip well we all wanted pokemon on to be able to play pokemon on a tv properly for so long yeah. and let's go pikachu and eevee really sort of set a bar yeah and it wasn't a difficult feat really to make that look and run great and yet everything else that they've tried to do since then is just absolutely terrible like the, yeah. the games themselves the ideas are good but the execution is not good and it's like every you know when they try and port games onto the switch now like the Batman games, like how, how yeah. honestly did we think that was going to go? You know, yeah. Like the Witcher Three, Mortal Kombat One. Yeah, like, d- just stop doing it. Even like the new, um, like EAFC Twenty Four. Like they they wanted to bring out a comparable version in terms of like game modes and features and gameplay and all the rest of it, mm. and that they can't. It runs at thirty. You can't play sports at thirty. It just doesn't work. You need that. You need it to be way more responsive, and it isn't. And maybe just, I mean, from what we read, the Switch 2 is a year or a year or so away at this point. Yeah. Um, it's, it's teasing 2025, I think, is when yeah. they, some people were hoping for late this year, but now it's kind of pushed back to early next year. Mm, like I saw March at the earliest. So it looks like we've got at least another year of terrible ports and. <laughs> So basically, if you've got if you just get in a switch, just play Nintendo first party stuff at this point, not yeah. Pokemon, but the rest of it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, speaking of Mario, Mario RPG, the remake of the Super Nintendo game, mm, is, uh, that looks good too. Yeah, it's really fun. It's you know, just art again, art style, graphics, everything. It's just, just it's just a cute game. It's a good way mm. to to, <laughs> to uh, describe it. Everything's just like. Like a chibi version, you got like chibi Mario, like little mm-hmm. characters, and it's just it's just cute. It's a cute game. It's, it's very easy, which is you know completely fine. Go into battles, press A. That's pretty much what you do. Um, but no, it's it's great. Yeah, it looks great. It it looks really really good. And obviously, that's a remake of uh, a game from the the Super Nintendo. Uh, yes, exactly. It didn't actually come out of here originally, so it's the first time we got it here in the UK. Really? Yeah, I think. As far as I, know. Yeah, I, th- I think you can play it on Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. No, wait. I think it's just Nintendo Switch Online because it's a SNES game, isn't it? Not um, 64. 
it's not on that, but it might have been on like the virtual console on Wii or Wii U or something. It might have been on the SNES Classic that they brought out. It might have been actually, yeah. It's good, mm. cool. So yeah, but no, it's a great game. Cool. Highly recommend checking it out if you get a chance. Um, but yeah, so, so I won't go through everything because there's been so many games. Of course, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the only one, other one recently was uh, Tekken Eight. Mm. Which is excellent. Graphically, looks incredible. Oh my god! <laughs> but it is a lot of fun. I refuse to believe that you're terrible at it. I'm not great. I thought it was okay. You know, I'll take it online rank matches and I'll just get destroyed. Oh. But it's I'll okay. Today. Oh yeah. Yeah, but I went on earlier on today. Um, I I love it. I just wanted to get the online trophies and stuff out of the way. Yeah, that, that, thankfully the online trophies are very easy. Just yeah. like play one game. Yeah, yeah win a ranked <laughs> match. That was fairly easy. Um, yeah. But you know what? It's so good. Like the Unreal Engine Five, um, that they've they've used they've used for Tekken Eight. It it looks fantastic. It really really looks fantastic, and uh, it's the best Tekken oh, yeah. since Tekken Three. I mean, I thought Tekken Three would be impossible to top, if I'm being honest, because <laughs> Tekken Three had everything, and it was just absolutely amazing. And yeah. every Tekken since, although fine, but like Tekken Seven was great. Like none of them have sort of reached the dizzying heights of Tekken three until Tekken eight, and Tekken eight is like the ultimate Tekken now. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, story mode is fun as well. Mm -hmm. Very ridiculous. Cool. It's completely insane. Uh, yeah, lots of cutscenes, lots of story, which I like. It's it's you know it's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. I, I he's easily the best Tekken game, and I think it's the best uh, of the three big hitters fighting game wise that have come out recently i yeah. think it, i all, the, all three are great by the way i think street fighter 6 is great i think mortal kombat 1 is excellent but i think tekken's the best out of the the three big hitters yeah i agree if you, if you have to play mortal kombat 1 i do want to play it i'll probably play it when when the uh, complete version comes out complete with awesome. the k complete with the k of course yeah <laughs> um so that's that but yeah tekken, who do you play as on tekken um usually wirang and i have since tekken 3 to be honest <laughs> uh, that's my guy right there you know but i i i played somebody online earlier on who was king and the way that the like king can reverse your moves and then turn them into wrestling moves just looks so awesome yeah they've done I've it so king. well yeah i play as king because wrestling um sure. some of the inputs are insane like to do forwards quarter circle back and then two punts at the same time <laughs> but you can do this insane damage and like a single, you know, grab combo. Yeah. It's insane. The suplex and then like a running, uh, running knee, what do they call it? Sliding wizard. Yeah. Uh, like muscle buster, tombstone power driver. It's got it all. <laughs> it's got every, pretty much every wrestling move you can do. It's great. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of sort of Akada moves in there as well because uh, yeah. I, I know that they had the uh, Akada ring gear in Tekken 7. So they've obviously <laughs> taken taken that and i think there was akada moves in tekken 7 as well but they've yeah. obviously transitioned that over to tekken 8 and it's just yeah king is awesome on it but yeah i play with wiring yeah it's probably why i'm so bad because i'm doing inputs are so crazy i keep messing up um, yeah, king's nuts dude yeah and my, my thing that keeps happening is you have to press two buttons at the same time for a lot of his moves mm -hmm. but if you're slightly off by like a single frame you won't do it you'll do like mm -hmm. a kick or something that's frustrating but i might yeah. just put it as a me thing I don't think it is. I think it probably is, a, especially if you're playing online. Yeah. Uh, you I know, think it can, there can be a little bit of lag there and stuff. So, yeah. And it's clearly designed for like arcade sticks, like for you know, hard, hardcore gamers oh. out there. <laughs> Go find yeah. Game. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And then we're there playing with the D pad, you know, because you can't use the <laughs> stick because that, it because no. No, the fight, you can't use analog stick in fighting games. It's crazy. No, no we've crazy. been through this before and it's yeah. still the same. No. No, it's, it's, yeah, if you do that, you're, you're playing it wrong. Correct. C completely wrong. Stop doing <laughs> it. Yeah. Crazy people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's about it. All the big hitters I've been playing. How about yourself? Mm. I've been honest, since Miles got here, I've been super casual. I've played, quite <laughs> frankly, what I would consider an embarrassing amount of EAFC 24. <laughs> um bad. Like I'm reaching Pez 2017 levels of embarrassing, maybe 2016. I can't remember. Either way, like I've just been playing it so much. Yeah, it's one of those um, games I imagine you can just jump in, have a game or two, yeah, lots of free time. It's yeah, that's perfect. it. 
Yeah, for sure. So like, if I get up and feed him in the morning before I log on for work or whatever, like he falls asleep in my arms and I just play because it's easy to play. Yeah. Um, but um, I have been playing some other stuff alongside it. I've been trying to sort of get back into uh, a few different games. So I've, I've been playing Hi-Fi Rush. I'm not far from the end now, so I'm going to finish that. And uh, it's, it's so good. Have you, have you played it? I've not. It's been installed on my Xbox for months now. I need to get around to it. Oh, you'll, you'll really like it. It's so, oh, yeah. so good. Uh, it's cool that it's coming to PlayStation soon as well. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, it's 100% worth playing. It's really, really good. It's really funny. The gameplay is great. It's quite unique as well in terms of a hack and slash game. So, yeah, definitely play. It's on Xbox Game Pass because obviously it is. And then it's coming to PlayStation next month, I think. Soon. Yeah. Very soon. So uh, I've been playing that. I've been playing a bunch of other stuff as well. But there's two games in particular that I want to talk about. Um, first one is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Okay. Uh, I personally really like it. I can see yeah. why some people wouldn't. But um, I feel like it's been set up to fail by the internet. Yeah, maybe. Because there's a good game in there. You know, we both played the uh, the closed beta when it first came out. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, it. We, yeah, we both liked it. The, the the gameplay was really good, and it looks great graphically. It looks great. There's a really good story in there. Very typical Rocksteady. They know exactly what to do with the DC license that they've got. Mm. Um, it's the live service stuff that people really have an issue with. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of sort of. There's a lot of. It could be probably condensed into a, a shorter experience. I've, yeah. I've played about 15 hours and I've barely even touched the story. I've just been sort of shooting random dudes in the streets. Yeah, I think that's the main issue with it. It's people, if this was a single player game, the same story put into like a Batman Arkham Star single player game, yeah, people would love it. It'd be a great game. Yeah. Um, but of course, they've probably been forced by the higher ups <laughs> in, sure, in charge yeah. to make this a live service game. And, uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna flop. That's the problem. It, yeah, it, it's it's massively gonna flop. And it, you know, it what doesn't help. And I tweeted this out yesterday. Um, is when or a couple of days back is when you know you have the likes of IGN when they do their final preview saying we've played Suicide Squad Qu Kill the Justice League and we didn't like it. And that's the headline of the video. And you're like, well, this game's gonna this game already destined to fail because people are gonna see that and be like, well, I ain't playing it. What's the point? Yeah, it's not great. To be fair, they left the the what do they call it? The when you can't review something until a certain time. Oh, the embargo. Like, embargo. That's it. But left out to really late, like right before it came out, mm. which is kind of very telling of when a game. But then someone's not, you know, when the developer's not confident in their game, they yeah. it's the last minute. And it's it's a real shame because there's a really great game in there. Like the like I said, the gameplay mechanics are actually very very good. The way mm. that you sort of traverse around Metropolis, which by the way looks fantastic as a as an open world, looks really really good. It's very well designed, much like Gotham was in the Batman Arkham games. You know, it mm. looks great. Uh, it plays great, and there's a great story there. It's just the the in between stuff and the missions are quite repetitive. That that's yeah. the big issue because they have tried to shoehorn that live service style of gameplay in there. The missions are unfortunately very repetitive and samey, and that that's the big shame. So you know, there's a there's a there's a fifty hour game in there. Um, and there's a, there's like a, a ten hour story, so you, you yeah. can you can spend hours and hours just playing the game, and there's a, there's only very little story, but you can't really blast through the story because you need to do the other stuff to level up, to be powerful enough to get through the story, if you, you understand what I mean. Yeah. I so mean. It, it's great, and I, I like it a lot, but the, it's my kind of thing, and that's why I like it. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's a 10 out of 10 game, because it isn't. I like it because I like it, because it's my kind of thing. Um, yeah. But yes. it could have been bigger. It could have been better, and uh, I think Rocksteady have been let down by whoever has made them make the game the way that they have. Uh, and that's a real shame because it is going to flop and they're going to lose money on it. And the gaming industry is already losing a lot of people uh, to, uh, you know, redundancies or, and stuff at the minute and layoffs are everywhere. And I fear that Rocksteady are going to be very much hit by this because of how Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League has ended up. 
yeah it's again it's the the people in charge don't see like they're not game fans they they're money no. fans yeah they, yeah of course um they see games like Fortnite and all these other live service games making a ton of money you think right we've got to do that we've got to make a live service game so we get take all these ips you've got you know we've got and then we're going to make them into live service games it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if they're any good <laughs> just 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 make it and you know people will buy it because it's you know it's super super guys got this dc people love dc yeah and it's rocksteady well, rocksteady have got that reputation you know they did the batman arkham games people love those games so we must be onto a winning combination here is the obvious trail of thought behind it and i get it i get it i do but you know the, the reason that the likes of fortnite and even destiny 2 and other games like that do so well is because they're free yeah it also um, you know, they, they have they have passion put into it by developers mm-hmm. that care. Um, whereas, you know, games like this, um, sort of developers themselves, the people who are making the game care, but mm-hmm. the higher up say you have to do this in a certain way and they just get burnt out on it and you know, it all gets ends up feeling the same as any other, you know, rushed out live service game. Yeah. Um, so that's you know, the story is good because the story is written by someone who cares, but the game itself yeah. was made by, you know, a dictated by higher ups you don't know anything about video games and how they work and what people actually want yeah uh, it, it, is, it is a real shame and you know people aren't aren't buying it full price they might buy it when it drops and i have a feeling that it will probably hit subscription services at some point mm. uh, like game pass or maybe even playstation plus i know that gotham knights did yeah that's not a game so pass. and i even liked gotham knights I, I like gotham knights it just had performance issues I yeah. thought as a and it, and it was a bit empty and again you can tell it was rushed out but uh, it's a real shame because uh, I like it like I said but it's not going to be for everybody and the way that it's been received by the gaming media and the internet who already wanted it to fail because of the style of game that it is they're getting their wish and it, it's unfortunate. Yeah, a good example of a recent uh, life service game which done really well is Hell Divers Two. Uh, yes, made by a small team who clearly care about the game they're making. They don't have higher ups telling them they need to do this and this and that. Um, you know, made by a passionate studio, mm-hmm. and it's done really, really well. It's done so well, insanely that- well. <laughs> yeah, just it's a uh, yeah. As I said, small, small developers. They know what people want. They look at what they what went what, what went well in their first game. They expanded on that. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, made a great game. People love. Yeah. Uh, speaking um, of Hell Divers too, actually, I have it, and the first few days that I had it, I couldn't play it because I couldn't get into the game. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's so good, people, you know, crash the servers because yeah. developers don't didn't expect it to be as big as it is because they're only yeah. a small team. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, apparently it's a lot better now, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, I have been able to play it since, and it is really good. And it's actually a game I've been thinking. Actually, I'd like to play. Uh, I'd like to make use of some of these games where you need where it's more fun with friends. So yeah, yeah. download it on PS5 so that we can like we can jump in and play. Because I want to in the evenings I have a lot of spare time now, um, yep. so I'd like to sort of play a bit more multiplayer. And I think Hell Divers Two would be really fun to play together. So yeah. download it, let's play it. Uh, it's really really good fun. That's not the other game I wanted to speak about, but we may as well as we're talking about it. But it, it's like Starship Troopers. If you've ever seen the movie Starship Troopers, it's crazy. Yeah. You just literally. I don't know if you, if, did you play the first one? Because it was like a um, top-down, twin-stick-style shooter. Uh, no, I didn't see the first one. But this one's like third-person. No, no, I mean like the first Helldiver, sorry. I uh, no. Oh, um, this one is like third-person, so they've changed it completely, and it's a change for the better, for sure, and it's really, really good fun. Uh, it's really, really great. So you'll see that when you play it for yourself, but yeah, definitely download it. We'll play it, and uh, you'll see how great it actually is. But well done to that team who who made Helldivers. Yeah, fair play to them. Did it the right way. Yeah. Congratulations on the success. <laughs> and what will, I'm sure, will be ongoing success for it because it's just going to keep getting better and better. And it's sort yeah. of uh, booking an industry trend of, you know, sales dropping off. It's just getting better and better. So well done. Congratulations to them. Yeah. Good job. Um, the other game I wanted to talk about was, it's another live service game and it's one that I was 100 percent convinced would fail oh yeah and it's skull and bones yeah now i've been playing skull and bones (laughs) and i'm pleasantly surprised by how good it actually is give it time yeah um (laughs) it's good fun for now yeah i mean i i really like it i've been playing it and there's there's some really 
like complex systems in there that they've mm. like the, the economy system is actually quite complex and really well done. Um, the ship combat is great. It's literally what, you know, Assassin's Creed black flag. I didn't know what I was going to expect when I jumped into it. Yeah. The, 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 the problem is uh, that most people is you're not playing as a pirate. You're playing as a boat. <laughs> you know, when you, when you, uh, you know, when you get another ship and attack another ship, you don't jump on the ship and attack, you know, the other ship, like you wouldn't black flag. You get a cutscene, and then the ship sinks, and that's kind of it. It's a bit of that. Down. Yeah, I, I I actually quite like that. I like the battles, but I would like more on land stuff, like Sea of Thieves, where you get to be a pirate and go and have a look on uh, islands. I'd like more of that. I know there is some of that, but I would like more of it. I, I think I was expecting a Ubisoft Sea of Thieves. Yeah, but what we've actually got is Assassin's Creed Black Flag multiplayer. Yeah. I um, just wish you had like actual combat, you know, like land like combat. sword combat. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I can, I can definitely agree with that. But I actually think the game itself is actually good. That's fair. Way better than I thought it was going to be. Like I thought it was going to be bloody awful. Like <laughs> I thought this is going to flop. No one's going to play. It. But you actually log on and there's people playing it. Loads yeah. of people playing it. It's just ships everywhere. Fair play. So people really like it. Uh, and I really like it. Yeah, you know, it isn't perfect. Again, like Suicide Squad, it isn't perfect. There's definitely stuff that could be better. And apparently they've got a roadmap of things that they... Because they've all got a roadmap. They've got a roadmap of stuff that they want to add to the game and make better. So I'm actually... It, and it's reviewed pretty well. Yeah. Like sevens. Yeah, six and sevens, yeah. Six and sevens. And I, I do... I know you played it sort of before it came out, didn't you? A little bit. Um, a lot of it. So you're you're probably very much burnt out on it. Perhaps a little bit. I did you know, mainly the very you know start the game again and again and again, which is, <laughs> didn't help. Um, no, but I've, I've I've sunk a few hours into it. No pun intended. And uh, yeah, I actually really like it. It's you know it isn't gonna. It's not a pirate game that's gonna take over Sea of Thieves. No. Um, but it's. I think the ship combat is very good and i think the world that it's built around is very good i just think there's some things that need tightening up there but there's a real good game in there that's fair uh currently on metacritic is sitting at 60. okay so what's best. suicide squad sitting at um question i'm guessing less than that i'm gonna go 30 something <laughs> i don't think it's gonna be that bad um suicide squad oh it's the same 60. 60 okay yeah. so I, I like bang average games apparently and that's okay <laughs> but um I, I they're two games that they're different but the same yeah and i actually i like both and they because again i they're, they're the kind of things that i enjoy to play yeah that's fair uh they they aren't great games but i think skull and bones i, I like Suicide Squad because I like the DC universe and I've always preferred DC over Marvel. Um, yeah, and I, I like the roadmap that they've got. I think they've got some cool stuff coming there as well. But I like Skull and Bones. I think there's something about it that's very intriguing. Uh, and I think the ship combat is very, very good. It's been in development long enough, so you'd think... Oh, well, that's true. Both <laughs> games have been in development for, Jesus Christ, a long, <laughs> long time. Yeah. Um, but I like both. And I think Skull and Bones is good. I think it's going to get better. Um, but I'm worried by the time it does get better and becomes like really, really good that people are just going to give up on it. No, nope. it wouldn't surprise me. But, you yeah. know, you get Google and, you know, Fallout 76 was, you know, panned completely when it came out. That's and true. That's, that's completely turned itself around and it's now, you know, one of the best multiplayer games out there. That's very true. The first Destiny, I guess, was not great when it first came out, lacking content and everything. And I mean, that the popularity of Destiny now is absolutely insane. So there's hope for it, but I don't see a massive future beyond year one for either of these games. So I'm just going to play them and enjoy them whilst they're, whilst <laughs> they're you... active, while, the, while, there's, while there's activity to be had there. Yeah, that's fair. But I like both, and I, I take back what I said about Skull and Bones because I do actually think it's 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 good. Cool, fair play. Uh, but otherwise, I've I've been super casual. I've been playing Tekken. 
Uh, I've started to get into Hell Divers, and I've been playing Hi Fi Rush, and I, but otherwise I've been casually. Just I'm counting down the days to WWE 2K24. If I'm being perfectly honest, so yeah, I'm mean, looking uh, forward to it. Actually, I'm really looking forward more forward to 2K24 than I was 2K23. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I'm not expecting it to be from a gameplay perspective all that different from 2K23, but I don't think it needs to be because I think in terms of actual gameplay for a wrestling game, 2K23 is the best. WWE game probably since the the first or second SmackDown versus Raw game. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, but no, it looks really, really fun. They've added loads and I look forward to seeing more. Yeah, build, build it on what is already great. Like, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the casket match. I'm glad that they've added the camera angle, the ramp camera angle. That yeah. makes me so happy because it. I don't know why, but it just makes a wrestling game look cooler. Like I love it in AEW Fight Forever. Um, the fact that they had that because it felt like a, a throwback to me. Yeah. Um, and I like that they've added it in this. Uh, I, I like being able to see the stage uh, and I think it's cool that it's going to be, you know, you could even use it during the Royal Rumble as well. Yeah, it's very cool. So I'm, I'm very excited by the prospect of, of that coming back. It's only a small thing. It's such a small feature to add. Yeah. But it's one that makes such a huge difference, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, uh, one of those things that they could have done you a long time ago, but yeah, uh, they've clearly listened finally to what people want, and that's what I like about 2K. They 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 listen and they they take what works and they improve on it. Mm-hmm. Um, they felt like the Yuke's games, you know, to back about war games, it kind of felt the same every year, and they didn't really yeah. fix anything. It was just you know, adding more story stuff and added the characters, and that's kind of about it. Yeah, um, but at least 2K it... game improves. Uh, not counting 20, that's not their fault. Uh, yeah, okay. we don't we don't count twenty, not at all. But, uh, since that, it's they've improved every year, and it's it's for yeah. sure getting better and better as uh, as the games go on. You know, adding cool new features. We got casket ambulance matches, special referees back, which is cool. The ramp awesome. cameras back. Uh, there's a really cool looking uh, mini mini game sort of uh, where you're exchanging punches and chops and stuff like that. Oh, I yeah. love stuff like that, and if the the fact they keep improving it, and it be, seems to become more and more up to date every year. Yeah, in terms of sort of what they can and can't do post content, uh, the season pass looks really good. I'm yep. excited by that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really really excited for WWE 2K24. Roll on Tuesday next week where we can finally play it and enjoy it. And whilst we're talking wrestling games, I want to talk about AEW Fight Forever, and okay. I want to know your opinion of how they've really managed to cock that up so bad in terms of post release content. Yeah, uh, well, you know, as a season pass in in two twenty four, you get a ton of characters over time. The more characters yeah. you, know, you want players, uh, but uh, you know, it's fight forever. You're paying the same amount of money, but you're getting like a character every five months <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, you just got the got what got the acclaimed recently. It's cost of fourteen. Yeah, so, so they they brought the so they brought a season two season pass out right, which was literally the acclaimed and Tony Storm and some new. Uh, like gauntlet style game mode, right? Right, that was twenty quid. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like that um, wasn't claimed in the game in the first place. They've been around yeah. since. The like, I know, and again, this game's been in development forever. Yeah, and... where's where's Claudio? You know, where's the Blackboard Combat Club? You know, yeah, where's all the players. <laughs> so then, the, now they've just brought out a season three season pass, where you yeah. get Swerve and a beach like arena seasonal <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh and claudio actually comes out next week so oh, the same fun. day as wwe 2k24 <laughs> and then yeah, after was, that everyone's yeah, making well, 24 no one's gonna play five forever no yeah, play. i know and and then it's like then you get jamie hater okay and then that's season three done Again, Jamie, that, what that, was Jamie from the start? I know. She was champion, I think, when the game came out. Yeah. And, Mad. you know, so you, so the game itself, the base game and the original season pass, season one pass, where I think you got three additional wrestlers, I can't remember, was something like, was would have been like 60 quid for the base game and the season pass. Yeah. The second season pass was 20 quid. Uh for three wrestlers uh, and a couple of other bits. 
the new Dynamite Arena, because sure. <laughs> the new season pass is 15 quid for three wrestlers at a beach arena. What what are we doing here? You know, <laughs> it's not great. You don't even uh, have a cage match in the game. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, and all I see, mostly what I see online is people, people, some people like the game, but it's not like they love it. They're not like typically excited to play it. They're not excited for the DLC. You see some people saying, "Yeah, you know, it's not that bad." Yeah, the game itself, <laughs> I like the, the game itself. I really like. Like, I love the yeah, gameplay. Okay. Match, matches were a bit quick, uh, but you know, it's fine. It was a bit easy at times. Sure, whatever. I'm sure they fixed some stuff. Um, yeah. It's not like 20, 20 pounds every, you know, maybe so often months. to get a couple of characters. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, yeah. What are you doing? And also the pricing is ridiculous. Like, so you could pay seven nights. So Tony Storm on her own was 10 quid. <laughs> Swerve and the Beach Arena on its own is eight quid. <laughs> the season pass is 15 quid. And the season pass before for Tony Storm and the Acclaimed and whatever else was 20 quid. Like, they're just making it up as they go along. <laughs> yeah. Uh, AW pay forever. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think they've really cocked it up. And uh, people, I mean, that game, I don't know how many people play that game anymore. I have it installed still because it's not taking up a great deal of space, but I'm not paying for anything additional outside of what i've already paid for with the original game in fact we didn't even pay for it we got it for free because of the podcast but you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know and here i feel like a dick moaning because of that but at the same time the pricing of the dlc is a joke for what you get yeah it's this is why people hate modern gaming you know exactly yeah it's you know it's a problem it's just many hungry developers it's a problem yeah and then you know and i hate to say it but You've got games like like Fortnite that are actually yeah. doing it pretty well. Like, well, they're doing it insanely well. Like, you you can you pay for a battle pass. You don't have to, but you can. And there's great, there's good stuff in the battle pass. And yeah. whilst you're playing, you can earn enough V bucks to buy the next battle pass should you want to. Yeah, you don't got to keep paying for it. You can just earn enough to pay for it itself. Yeah, like Rocket League. Do any. Do any uh... Battle Pass I've ever bought was in Bucket League when I got mm-hmm. next to it again. Um, and you got some cool stuff. You got really cool like car skins. You got like uh, gold celebrations when the thing explodes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really cool. There's cool music. Yeah, it's it's, it's worthwhile. Yeah. You know, it's fairly cheap as well. Um, yeah, yeah. The last I mean, I actually bought the the latest Fortnite Battle Pass. It was seven quid. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and just, look, you know. look at the way that they've updated that game. You obviously have Fortnite Festival in there now, which is basically rock band. Yeah. They're adding they're adding plastic guitar support for the game soon. That's cool. So the guitars that people already have, you can use. Like I've seen that there's already third party developers bringing out new guitars, which is Good. crazy in 2024. Which I love, by the way, because it's my my jam. As soon yeah. as the plastic guitar mode comes out, I'm gonna fucking kill these kids. All right, <laughs> that, that's what's that's what's happening, guys. All right, so the I love Guitar Hero and I love Rock Band, and you're all getting murdered when I can pull out that plastic guitar again. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to play. We'll have to get together and play some. Uh, oh, okay. Hero. We'll, we'll actually destroy the nerds. Well, yeah, absolutely. Actually... And also, like, it's just a bunch of free tracks that they keep adding all the time. And wow. obviously, you've got the Rocket Racing mode now, which I think is really good as well, made by Psyonix. So they just keep adding to the game. So you feel like paying for a season pass every two or three months, even if you did and you didn't earn the V bucks or whatever, it's really not that bad. Yeah, but you know it's a free game as well, so it's seven pounds for exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) What free game you can play for months? Um, Have you tried the Fortnite festival stuff? By the way, I've not. It looks really good though. Yeah, you should try it. I know, obviously, you're not big into Fortnite these days, and that's fine, but. I feel like for the new content and the platform that Fortnite itself is actually becoming, uh, it's well worth checking out. I mean, oh, Jesus, they added the the Lego Fortnite thing, which is basically Minecraft, but with the Lego license. And it's so <laughs> polished and such a good standalone game on its own that it's worth checking out. So you've got the, not only the great Battle Royale now, you've got Fortnite Festival, which is basically Rock Band because it's made by Harmonix, and they've ended... Um, ended support for rock band four and now they're going to just keep supporting Fortnite festival you've got rocket yeah. racing by sonics who obviously make rocket league and then you've got lego minecraft basically in <laughs> and it's all in one free game 
that has a battle pass. Yeah. I don't know. Some games are doing it right. Some games are doing it horrendously wrong. AW Fight Forever doing it horrendously wrong. <laughs> yeah, I keep set a while ago now, but I'll put set on my Xbox 360 to play like Guitar Hero. And my oh, Xbox yeah. 360 is not healthy. It is, it is, it is dying. It is dying a slow, painful death. Um, <laughs> See, I've because... got a newer model. I say a newer yeah. model. I've got one of the newer model Xbox 360s. Nice. Mine's an old one. As, uh, yeah, it took so long to start up. It was just like, loading for ages. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is struggling. Good. Yeah. Um, but, but it did eventually work. And I put the disc in and played like uh, Cult of Personality on, <laughs> on there. Nice. Guitar Hero Greatest Hits. Like, oh, have you yeah. got Guitar Hero Greatest Hits, have you? Yeah. That's yeah. one of the ones that I'm missing. I have all of oh, them. Yeah. Um, and I'm missing Van Halen and Greatest Hits. Otherwise, I have them all. Nice. Yeah. I'll bring around. Yeah. We'll jam. Yeah. That'd be so <laughs> sick, actually. That'd be so yeah, sick. I'd love that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's what we've been playing. We've, you know, it took 40 minutes because we get sidetracked because, you know. <laughs> that's us. That's, that's what we do. That's, 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 yeah, that's us. So let's talk, let's talk gaming news. What have you got? Uh, right. Pokemon thing just happened. I'm not huge into Pokemon these days, but I do admire it from afar. I'm more, I'm more of a Gen 1-er. I know all the Gen 1 Pokemon. Everything after that, I'm like, clear with this. Who's <laughs> that Pokemon? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of Pokemon these days either. But it's not because I don't like it, but because the games have been shitty. Like, like we spoke yeah. about earlier, the games have been awful. So yeah, you know, it's because... anyone, come, anyone comes out, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try that one. I'm gonna play it, but then I just, I just don't. Yeah, and it's like, um, you know, they're probably doing stuff now because Power World has become so popular. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that like, Pokemon Yellow is the best Pokemon. Nothing will ever top that. No, I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. But yeah, so they, they have announced a bunch of stuff because they it's just the weird way that Nintendo do it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but with a couple of cool things in there. But Pokemon uh, card game on your phone. Mm. It sounds rubbish, but it actually looks really fun. Um, <laughs> like you lock backs, you open the backs, you get you know certain cards. And you play them you know, with people online or whatever. It's, you know, it's got that addictive... Nature trait, you know, collect cards. I assume you pay money to get cards. You get um, two free packs a day based on the trailer that I watched. I think that's okay. what it said. Yeah, that's pretty good. But yeah, it's just, you know, if, if you collected these cards back in the day as a kid, it is a nostalgia factor for you. And, you know, Pokemon's one of the biggest, or probably the biggest franchise ever. So mm-hmm. it's guaranteed to, <laughs> to do well. Um, See, yeah, I saw cool. this and thought yeah. straight away, I thought, oh, this is, that's, that's cool. Because I like WWE Supercard on my phone. If you've got a spare few minutes, you just play around on your phone and it's a, a cool thing to play. So I saw this and I was like, okay, that's actually kind of cool and not crap. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'll probably give it a download. You know, collect my Pokemans. Yeah. And I'm like, who the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's, <laughs> this this what's, this Poke- what's this bullshit Pokemans? <laughs> Where's Squirtle? Yeah. All right. What's this anthropomorphic cat doing here? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's this? Why? Why? Why does it look like Mataro from uh, from Mortal Kombat? A half man, <laughs> half horse Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, that probably isn't a thing, but you know, it probably is at this point. Oh no, yeah, it probably is actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest thing though is the new Pokemon Legends game, Pokemon Legends Z A. Good sure. name. Pokemon. Great name, really good name. Uh, runs at two frames per second on Switch. Um, <laughs> it's running on a very basic PS2 style game engine, probably. Probably. Um, it's announced in 2025. Some people are saying it might be cross gen, you know, Switch and Switch 2. Yeah, I think it will be. That could be cool. Well, it said Switch platforms. They were oh, it very did. sort of, yeah, it did. It said <laughs> um, available 2025 on Switch platforms. Now, that could just mean. The switch that's out now and you know the switch light or whatever or the oled model yeah but i don't think it means that i think it means switch platforms as in the one that you can play now and the one that we've got coming that we've not announced or shown you in 2025 yeah interesting interesting and there's a special edition version of the switch 2 that's got a, a pokemon design on it and it's going to cost you 700 pounds yeah yep. You better get it quick because we've made five of them, and then they're going to be 
they'll all be bought by scalpers and have to buy them online for like five thousand pounds or whatever <laughs> yeah tell you what's hilarious about pokemon is you remember when the switch came when let's go pikachu and let's go eevee came out and they brought the the ball the pokeball peripheral out oh yeah right i have that the only game that you can use it on is pokemon let's go pikachu slash eevee peggy None 16. Of the other... peggy 16 yeah peggy 16 <laughs> The only so, game you can play it on is that, which is an absolute joke. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, remember the uh, Poker Walker from Pokemon Soul Silver? Sure, yeah. It's like a like a pedometer, you carry around. You put your Pokemon on it, and you carry it around with you, and you can level up your Pokemon by walking. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have that still. Wow, <laughs> that, that, yeah. is that worth anything? Um, well, but, but yeah, it's a little bit, I think, actually, because all the Pokemon games are worth, you know, they're crazy money these days. Mm. Because people See, I have the, I have that Pokeball for the Switch. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. Like it's actually cool because, like, when you catch a Pokemon using it in the game, that Pokemon's noise plays through the the ball. It get, you know the haptics in the in the ball are cool. cool. It, you know, it's a very cool piece of kit, but they made it for one game. Yeah, I think all of it though, it's, it's probably going to be worth a decent amount of money in the future because yeah, Pokemon. Um, sure. Yeah. I think I think another thing with all Pokemon games as well is there's so many fakes out there, like. So many, it's insane. Like, yeah. chances are, if you buy a copy off eBay, it's going to be fake. Um, <laughs> so, if, so if you can find a genuine one in out in the wild or on eBay, and you know, if you can prove it's genuine, then it's going to be worth a fair bit of money. That's crazy, though, right? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's because you know, Pokemon's so insanely popular, people are yeah. just going to try and cash in on it. Yeah, and it's so easy to make fake Game Boy games and <laughs> Game Boy Advance games. It's yeah, crazy. right, yeah. So that's Pokemon. Uh, also, recently announced, well, not announced, but shown off finally, is the uh, Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the mm. Earth Tree. Uh, it looks huge. They've added so much. It's like, it looks almost like Elden Ring 2. <laughs> it's, it's that big. I mean, the Elden Ring is so insanely popular. Yeah. It's it's one. It's easily a bit, uh, from software's biggest and best uh, game out there. And it's just, yeah, it's incredible. It's, got, it's just a huge following. The views are incredible. You know, reviews are in the nineties. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, it's yeah, and they're, they're adding to it. They've added more story, more enemies, more bosses, more everything. Uh, it is a bit expensive. People are complaining about the price because it is just DLC. But how much is it? Twenty about thirty pounds, I think. That's okay. You know, it's going to be. Wait, you're paying that for Claudio Castagnoli for on AW Five Forever. So you know, you, you yeah, balance it out, which is worth it. Yeah, it's going to be huge. There's, you know, it's been in development for a long time. Elderman came out a long time ago now, yeah, so you yeah, know, it's... two years. Is it even that old? It's not that old, is it? It's not two years. Um, I don't remember. I'll have a look. I think it's last year. I think it came out last year, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because game of the year. No. You know, what? I, I can't remember. I'll look at that. Hold on. What were you Peggy sixteen in that anyway? What, what What was that playing? That was the uh, Elden Ring the uh, DLC trailer, the auto play. Oh, okay. Um. Release day came out in February 2022. Wow, nice time flies by, doesn't it? What so literally two years? Yeah, Jesus, wow. man, crazy. You got 96 on Metacritic, of course, it did 96. Mental, yeah, that's it's huge. It's a huge game. I still think Bloodborne's their, uh, Bloodborne's their best, yeah. Bloodborne is, yeah, in, in a way, too. You know, different games in a way. They are, yeah, yeah, they uh, are. very open. Whereas Bloodborne is obviously very linear, but they are both fantastic games in their own right. Mm. Um, from don't really make shit games. Let's be fair. Here. I mean, they. I didn't play Armored Core, but from what everything I read about it, it's very, very good. Yeah, and yeah, they're one of the best developers out there. You know, they're killing it. They are killing it. No killing game it by killing you over and over and over and over and over. Pretty much. Uh, still didn't drop their best game. Uh, fine. Here we go. It's the 3 game heroes. The best yeah. game. We talked about that a little while ago. It's so cool. Yeah, it's def that's definitely the best game. Easily. I love it. 100%. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's was pre, pre Demon Souls from software. Yep. <laughs> Demon Souls, that remake rules, by the way. It's so good. It looks, it's still now, it looks one of the best looking games on PS5. Yeah. I, I tell you what, uh, it did annoy me actually that I saw recently. But the internet like went mental about it. It's the the quote about the, the PS5 being in its latter stages, like the, the second half of its life. It's that's such bollocks. Hey, just like, they've, they've like taken it. a they've taken a quote, right? And they've they've really sort of misread it. 
yeah, uh, misunderstood sort of what it means. You know, I don't think we've even started to really scratch the surface of what the PS5 is capable of, and um, I don't think we're going to see another console from either Microsoft or Sony for a good four years yet. Yeah, it's a, it's still a long ways off. Might see a PS5. Oh, god, yeah, at some point. But I don't even think there's any point in that at the minute, especially yeah. if, if games, you know, developers can't get games to run consistently at 4K60. What's the point in a pro can't version of a console if you can't do that? You know, that was the, you know, the the, the 8K logo is on the back of the PS5 box. You are joking if you think we're anywhere near that. <laughs> oh no, mental. The, the Insane. AK, AK TV didn't exist at this point. Monitors uh, maybe. I used. think some. But they're mega expensive, like ridiculous expensive. Yeah, Smash. we're nowhere near it. We're absolutely nowhere near it. And I'd be surprised if we get anywhere near it before the end of the PS5's life cycle in four or five years' time. Whatever. Yeah, they're yeah. still making PS4 games for Christ's sake. But there's no way that we're anywhere near the back end of the PS5. Yeah, that's crazy. They're still making PS4 games. That's mad. Yeah. I don't know why, why bother at this point. Well, you know, I know, I know there was big time supply issues for the PS5 when yeah. it first came out. So that obviously gave people an incentive to sort of keep making games on PS4 for that time. But you you can readily walk into a shop and buy a PS5 now. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Well, you you know, the slim model, which is nice, you know, pointless maybe, but it's nice. Yeah. Um, you can just go into a shop and buy one. Yeah. Just go on Amazon. They'll have some available. Exactly. Yeah. Literally, you could probably get one today. Just order yeah. it on Amazon, and Amazon will just deliver it on your doorstep in the next 30 minutes, probably. <laughs> yeah. What I can believe is that we're a year into PlayStation VR 2 already. I know, right? It's, it's, where's that gone? It's crazy. Like I, I'm sure it only came out a month ago. Feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting here playing uh, Beat Saber for like two years. I'm not, not even noticed. You've been playing much VR stuff. Um, playing Resident Evil 8. Uh, so oh. I'm playing through that, which has been really, really fun. Playing through that in VR is, uh, is in mental. Mm. It's, I mean, that game's crazy anyway. Yeah, the atmosphere and everything, it's, just, it, it's so good. And, mm. you know, to get the guns, you feel like, it sounds stupid, but it feel like you're actually loading a gun. You have to mm-hmm. take the MR out, take a, take a new clip off your belt, put it in, yep. lock the gun. It's great. <laughs> Are you going to play Resident Evil 4 in VR as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. When, when I'm done with 8, I'll hop over to 4. Yeah. The only downside with 8 uh, is you can't unlock trophies in VR mode. Oh, really? Damn. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Well, that sounds, that's really stupid. Yeah, it's a bit pants, but I'm going to get it. Oh, oh well. I'll, I'll play through it again a couple of times in you know flat mode. It's really good. <laughs> it is really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great game. Mm. So yeah, uh, we're not in the la- we're not in the back end of the PS5's life cycle. So don't don't think you're gonna have to shell out five hundred quid for a new console in the net anytime soon because you're not. No. <laughs> Where's my uh, Code Veronica remake, Capcom? Oh, that's coming for sure. Didn't I, I read like there was so many Resident Evil games in the works? Yeah, that's good. I need more. Code Veronica will be one of them. Yeah, I do hope so. It's one of my favorite uh, classic Resident Evil game. Played out on the Dreamcast. Yeah, ah, the Dreamcast. Good times. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, the best. <laughs> the People best. are still making Dreamcast games. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, it's great. Like... Keep keep the dream alive, guys. Oh, yeah. No pun intended yeah. there, by the way. I see what you did there. The dream alive. So, yeah, keep the Dreamcast alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, has, um, have the PlayStation Plus games been announced for March yet? Well, I know, but we're literally oh, yeah. on the 29th of February, so... Uh, yeah, I think Sifu was on there. Let's have a look at the other ones. Great game. Great game, yeah. actually, Sifu. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing it myself. Have you not played it yet? Uh, not yet. That's oh, awesome. It's really, really good. Games. <laughs> yeah. Good plus games. It's been pretty good recently, PlayStation Plus. Yeah, it's been pretty good. The, you know, With the Game Pass-like service, there's a ton of games on there. Yes, yeah, heaps. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, Sifu. One of them, PS5, PS4. Good. F123. Okay, the new one's it's coming fine. out soon. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. Um, Hello Neighbor 2. Okay. Like an online uh, horror game, I think. And uh, Des- Destiny 2, The Witch Queen, Queen DLC. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. 
Sure, why not? Yeah. You know, Destiny yeah. 2 is always popular. Yeah, I'm not going down that black hole again. No way. Yeah, I oh, know. I, no. I haven't played it too. I'll, I'll try and lock these trophies. The new version just came out on PS5. And then I'll just lost locked in there for like 100 hours. By the way, that game is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, incredible. Still. Yeah, uh, but I'm not going down that hole again. Not a chance. No. I love it. And when you play it, you're like, oh my God, this game is so good. But no, <laughs> I'm not doing it. And you just get stuck playing it and nothing else for the next five months. Yep. <laughs> that's a good selection you know there's, there's something for everyone there They'll moan, people will moan about it yeah people always do yeah what about Game Pass games let's have a look uh, what do you think to the um, Microsoft bringing their first party games to PlayStation and Switch and stuff uh, yeah I think it's you know it's a smart move you know more money why not <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. people people like oh it's the end of Xbox Yeah, before obviously you know they clarified what it was going to be People were like properly over the top. Oh, it's the end of Xbox. No more Xbox consoles. Our ecosystem's fucked with this. It's gone. It's going to be gone forever. And yeah. all it is is Sea of Thieves, Hi Fi Rush, um, Pentiment. I think that's what it's called. And oh, yeah. something else going to um, PlayStation consoles and Switch. Yeah, it's really not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It means, you know, Xbox players will still get their games for free on Game Pass. Yep. You know, and literally free if you do your Microsoft rewards. Are you, exactly. Are you still doing that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm smashing it, to be honest, every day. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, yeah. I've got, you know, my next three months worth of Game Pass is basically paid for, to be honest. So. <laughs> yeah, I've got Game Pass until like August, I think, this year. Yeah. It's like... right. It just, just keeps, just keep doing it. Yeah. So I'm not even paying for Game Pass at this point. So, you know, it's <laughs> literally free. Um, so yeah, um, it, it's Good. a smart move by Microsoft. More money, you know. PlayStation players, Switch players are going to have to pay for the games, whereas you know, Sea of Thieves will still be free on Xbox. By the way, it's a great game. You know, I don't know how much they're going to charge for it. In my opinion, I don't think you can charge fifty quid for it. Um, I think if you're charged, if you charge thirty five quid for Sea of Thieves, I think that's probably about right. Yeah, I did see it advertised on the page of the network, actually. I was like, oh, that's cool. And this is how much it was there. Hmm. But, you know, I think I I don't see a big issue with, you know, everyone at this point, I think, has their preferred ecosystem that they want to play on. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, you know, I, I still think PlayStation would outsell Xbox handsomely, even if Spider-Man, The Last of Us, etc., etc., was on Xbox. Uh, yeah, easily. I still think PlayStation would be the dominant force in the gaming market. People just have their preferred ecosystem. I don't think having those games anywhere else would affect them at all. No, people aren't going to jump ship at this point. No, they're not. They're not at all. Uh, so yeah, Sea of Thieves. I think even if you brought Gears, Halo, etc. to PlayStation, people are still going to play Xbox and Xbox is still going to have their core uh, player base. Yeah. I agree. People Share the love, everyone, okay? Yeah, people aren't going to suddenly just sell their Xbox and buy, oh, it's on PlayStation now. Get on my Xbox. No, it yeah. doesn't mean, <laughs> to mean PlayStation players will play Gears of War. Yeah, which would be great, by the way, because, yeah. yeah, you have access. Not everyone can afford two consoles. We're very fortunate in the fact that we do have both consoles. Or three yeah. consoles, I guess, if you factor Switch into this in a VR headset or whatever. But not everybody has that luxury. So I think everything being available everywhere is honestly the way forward. Um, it means more money for everybody. It uh, yeah. would mean potentially less layoffs in the industry because there's more money being made everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I, not everybody will agree with that, and that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> but I yeah. that's my personal opinion on it. I think if you had, if you know, if everybody's studios were making games for everywhere, then it'd be fine. Nobody yeah. would be affected. And I think more money would be made. Yeah, I agree. Just put everything on everything. You know, who cares? Yeah. More money. Exactly. And isn't that what made the what makes the world go around? It's certainly yeah. what makes the gaming industry go around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Game Pass games for, month, for uh, March. Uh, we've got Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun. Sure. <laughs> we've got Lightyear Frontier. Uh, MLB The Show 24. See, that's a Sony. That's a PlayStation game. 
yeah, that's the only game. Uh, we've got well, that, Diablo 4 at the end of the month. It's a big one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we're going to start to see the Activision Blizz stuff uh, flood onto Game Pass now. Yeah, and the game called hey. Open Roads. Which is supposed to be quite good, actually. Um, that, that's another th- Call of Duty, right? Phil Spencer basically implied that this year's Call of Duty is going to go straight onto Game Pass. Well, okay. Do you think that's still not going to sell a fuck ton of copies on PlayStation? I oh, know people. <laughs> it will still sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's it's still going to sell. So yeah, you know, but no matter. Game Pass people are still it's still be the of highest thing. I mean, yeah, <laughs> and it it will still sell a shitload of ton a shit ton of copies on PlayStation. Yeah. So. Yeah, people aren't going to stop playing PlayStation just if Call of Duty is going to be on Game Pass day one. Cool yep. for Xbox players. Great. Awesome. Great. Yeah. yeah. And because of that, Game Pass uh, sales will go up. You know, yeah, I mean, they, yeah. what did they say? They had like, they had like 30, well, they had like 30 million active Game Pass subscribers paid. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone's struggling. No. We're fine. Games ain't going to stop being made. Well, some games have been cancelled because of these layoffs and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I think there's there's definitely something that could be worked out where everybody everybody's happy. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully, the Microsoft doing this and allowing some of their first party games to go to PlayStation is you know maybe their first first sort of you know creaking of the door. Yeah, the first step. Yeah, Gears of War on PlayStation would be fucking wild. By the way, it'd be great. Love it. Mm. Then again, I wait to play on my Xbox. Got to work on Xbox. Oh yeah, there is that as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Should we go to uh, games of March quick? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's go. Let's speed through it. Um, looking for the big, the big names. Uh, I've got the Outlast Trials, which is uh, a multiplayer horror game. Oh uh, yeah. This has been on PC for just a while, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it's coming to PS4, Xbox. Uh, one like PS5, Xbox, everything. It's going to do everything except Switch. Um, because if it did come to the Switch, it'd run like ass. Yeah, it'd melt. It'd melt the Switch. Yeah, uh, uh, it looks really fun though. It's, you know, it's a multiplayer, you know, yeah. power game. Basically. It's supposed to be really good. And if you've played Outlast, it's set in that universe, so terrifying. Yeah. Proper scary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Of course, of course, we've got two K twenty four coming out next week. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, next week. We, yeah, next week. Yeah, Tuesday for the one that we've got. Yeah, sweet. I'm buzzing. I can't wait. Me too. Adrenaline yeah. is in my soul. <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Rose on the cover there. Yep. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, have you seen the Have you seen the trailer for? Obviously, you have seen the trailer for 2K, where they've got the yeah. weird AI generated Hogan's and Austins like. Oh, yeah. Their bit. Austin with his huge face on the tiny yeah, head. Yeah, so weird. <laughs> so strange. So weird. Why do like, they look at but... that and think, yeah, this is fine. They look, they look like Stone Cold. Yeah, Can't this see. is great. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, no one will know this is AI. <laughs> they take the face, shrink it to a normal size, and then you're good. But no, they left yeah. it. So strange. I can't wait for it. I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah. Um, oh, we've got Spider-Man 2's new game, Plus DLC, coming out. Oh, yeah, cool. That's cool. Uh, great game. I need to go back and plan a bit, but I, I was so spider man out because of my own fault for playing Spider-Man Remastered like a month before Spider-Man 2 came out. So I, I, I did myself over there, but I'm going to go back to it because it's fantastic. I loved the story. A little bit short for me, um, but yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I, I like short games, but it was a bit too short for me. That's fair. Um, what else do you got? Uh, a game called Unicorn, Uni- Unicorn, Unicorn Overlord. Oh come on! Which is uh, sounds stupid, but it actually looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Made by uh, Vanillaware, who make who made uh, Odin Sphere, uh, Thirteen Sentinels, uh, Dragon's Crown. All games I'm sure you've heard of. So many games that I've definitely platinumed. <laughs> of course, uh, but no, they're very, they're very, very well made. Good games. Uh, very unique and well done art style. It's lots of like hand drawn characters. Oh okay, I like that. Yeah, it's really cool. Stupid name. It's but, a really <laughs> stupid name. Looks like looks like, uh, looks like it's going to be a good one. Good. Uh, what else we got? What else? Uh, Pokemon stuff. Pokemon Scarlet Violet DLC, I think. Jesus. Oh, it's a bit like a raid battle. <laughs> uh, no clue. Uh, what else? There's so much. 
Nothing. Lawn mowing simulator comes to Switch. It's coming to VR soon as well. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, good stuff. It's a game called Ib. I-B. Um, Ib? Yeah, Ib. I'm trying to bring it up. There we go. The 2D exploration and adventure is set in creepy, mysterious art gallery. It's like a little indie game. Indie mm-hmm. horror game. Looks bad. Not going to lie. Looks bad. Yeah, it looks pretty shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's it got? Hi-Fi Rush coming to PlayStation. Mark yeah, Price. play it. Play it. It's really, really good. Like, Very And cool. actually, it's stunning to look at. It's like the art style is amazing. It's really, really good. Yeah. I need to play, play it. Uh, we've got there's, the a, new... there's actually an achievement called Words Are Hard. Oh, really? <laughs> so I instantly thought of us when uh, when I saw it pop up yesterday. Yeah, they're not wrong. Words are hard. But absolutely, they are. <laughs> Uh, we've got a new Alone in the Dark coming, finally, on the 20th. Oh, I forgot, I forgot all about it. Yeah, the demo came out, like a teaser demo came out uh, a long time ago. Yeah, about five years ago. <laughs> yeah, basically. But no, it looks really good. I like, I'm like. i a fan of Alone in the Dark. Um, very Resident Evil style uh, gameplay. I actually have yeah. the uh, PS1 version of uh, The New Nightmare, which just came out on literally everything. Uh, here it is. Yeah. Very, very cool. Play, it came out on Dreamcast, PS2, PS1, um, Game Boy Color. In fact, you can play the Game Boy Color version on Nintendo Switch online, which is really <laughs> very random. Um, <laughs> that's not the version I would have chosen to play. Uh, uh, no, but I think I originally had it on Dreamcast, which is great. I like it a lot. It's literally mm-hmm. Resident Evil. Uh, <laughs> if you're a fan of Resident Evil, you'll probably like it. Okay, yeah, this new one looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna go review wise. I'm gonna say seven out of ten. Yeah, I'd go sevens. It's gonna get a, it's you know good but not great. Not Resident six, Evil six point five to seven. Yeah, makes sense. Mm. I think it'll be good. It's something I think I'd enjoy. Same. I enjoyed the demo. I thought the demo was good. Yeah, very cool. Uh, we have uh, Princess Peach. Prince, uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Where's her heart? Where's her heart? Coming out on Switch, no clue what this game is. They've they've <laughs> prepared loads of trailers for it. It looks like a different game each time. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> N- N- Nintendo are gonna Nintendo guys. Yeah, but it's made on Nintendo. It's probably gonna be really good. So yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> yeah, Princess Peach. Gotta love it. Yep. Yeah. Dragon's Dogma like... Two. Oh okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, this game's got a lot of hype around it. First game was excellent, underrated. Uh, came out three sixty and PS three. I think in PS three. Um, yeah, it looks like this looks like more of the same, but shinier, more polished, more next gen. Yeah, I'm sure people love that. I'm sure I'd enjoy that if I ever get bound to playing it, which I probably won't at this point. That'll be pretty big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I won't will. play it obviously, but uh, yeah, that'll be pretty big. Yeah, um, yeah, South Park Snow Day looks uh, awful. Game, um, they took all their all their uh, you know, good RPG elements from their game. For the past couple of games, threw in a bin and made a uh, 3D four player cooperative weird looking game. Yeah, it's, it's, like... not, it's not Ubisoft anymore. Yeah. It's THQ like... Nordic who bring out outrageously prized collector's editions of games. And <laughs> this one looks absolutely awful. Now, I love South Park. I loved The Stick of Truth. I loved The Fractured But Whole. Uh, but this looks absolutely awful. It's like the same style animation that we had on the N64 South Park games. I was going to and... say, it looks. Looks more like South Park GT4 than it does the most recent RPG games. Yeah, it looks terrible, and I'm anticipating this is going to be not good. Yeah, me too. As soon as I saw the trailer, I was like, "Why? Why would you make this? <laughs> you, you have good games. You make good games. Why would you?" Uh... Yeah, why have you? Why would you ruin it by doing this? Because they're still going with the new kid thing, like theme from yeah. the, the the last two games. Yeah, you got Cartman in his it's... outfit. Yeah, uh, and doing this this way with that graphic style doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say this is... I think it will sell because it's South Park, and South Park's really popular, but I think it'll be awful. I think it'll be really bad. It's another example of higher-ups seeing this, uh, seeing South Park, seeing what's popular, it, and thinking, okay, we need to make a multiplayer co-op game uh, in 3D, get rid of the 2D stuff. No one likes 2D. Mm. We need to make a 3D co-op game because everyone loves them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll make us the most money. 
Yeah, here's a 200 pound collector's edition where you get a massive plastic Cartman in a wizard hat. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is going to bomb badly. Yep, I agree. Shame. Um, but I think that's about it for the big games. Lots of rubbish, as usual. Lots of indie. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's also something that would be good. I think I'm sure most of it will be rubbish. Plenty of visual novels, plenty of uh, other crap shoehorned in there. <laughs> Basically. Hair Trusted Simulator. That's a good one. Sure, yeah. That looks good. <laughs> That'll be really good. Probably better than South Park. Probably. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, so pick of the month? Um, pick of the month. It's got to be 2K, really, hasn't it? 2K24? Yeah, 100%, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alone in the Dark is a close second. Flop of the month is going to be South Park. Yeah, yeah, easily. Absolute bollocks. Why make it? Why make it? The thing is, right, the reaction was so bad to that first trailer. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing how that pans out, to be honest, because it could be quite hilarious. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And but yeah, I think that's funny about it for gaming stuff. Unless you've got something you want to add? No, not really. No, all good. Um, fairly, it's a relatively quiet month for releases. Like, I feel like January and February have actually been fairly big. Yeah, they started off strong. Now it's time, hopefully, for a lull and then before it goes back up again at the end of the year. Yeah, could do without a back end of the year like the one we've just had because that was ridiculous. <laughs> it's mental. Yeah, Too insane. Um, right, let's let's talk wrestling. We're in WrestleMania yes. season, but before we touch on WrestleMania. Let's, uh, you know, we've not had a chance to talk about it because we've not been doing wrestling stuff. Uh, but Vince, wow. 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 We knew Vince was a, a, a creepy pervert. We didn't know yeah. how much a creepy pervert until recently. Good God. Good God. Uh, a horrible man. Horrible, horrible man. A, t- a terrible, terrible human being. Uh, probably one of the worst human beings in the history of human beings easily the one of the worst human beings in the history of pro wrestling and there's been some bad ones yeah. uh but you know vince is you know he's now tarnished any legacy that he had yep he's responsible for what pro wrestling looks like in now but mm-hmm. that's as far as it goes that's where it stops um you know and he's dragging he's dragged other people down with him you know brock lesnar uh, also yeah. another one you know tarnished his legacy yep Let's see him again. Nope. Um, I'm good. I don't think we'll see him ever again. I think that's it. I mean, they've even sort of erased him the best that they can from 2K24. Uh, He's been taken out of WWE Supercard, um, which sounds like a minor thing, but that game is outrageously popular. Yeah. Um, But yeah, you know, Vince, uh, just a disgraced old pervert. And... Good riddance to bad rubbish, and WWE is going to be better for it. Yep, you know there's going to be a a bit of recovery needed uh, for all this to sort of go away. Uh, but the more you hear, the more you read, the sicker it gets, and it's absolutely uh, it's it's awful. It, it it truly is awful, and uh, I'm glad that he's I'm glad that he's gone and he's gone for good at this point. I mean. <laughs> It's bad to me that Slim Jim pulling their sponsorship from the Royal Rumble was the final straw for TKO to be like, okay, yeah, it's time for you to go because we're going to lose money. Not mm-hmm. because you're an absolute disgrace. Not because you're a scumbag, but we might lose yeah. you. But, uh, you know, um, they, they apparently they called him and was like, it's best you retire, or uh, quit, resign now, straight away. Yeah. And, you know, since then, WWE's been you know pretty great yeah <laughs> it's been so much better so much better so much better across the board as well you know uh, nxt can... i think is very good now yeah now that they sort of got rid of that nxt 2.0 garbage it's really started to become its own weird wrestling soap opera is how i view <laughs> nxt at the minute it's yeah. like a weird wrestling soap opera with the weirdest cheesiest backstage story segments and <laughs> Good wrestling. I think that's probably the best way to describe NXT. But main roster stuff, very, very good. It's WrestleMania is going to be huge. You know, The Rock is back for a stint. He's on the next three SmackDowns. He's a heel again. And it's, uh, awesome. it's he's, you know, he's on the board at TKO now. Uh, as much but as yeah. he wanted his main event WrestleMania match uh, against Reigns for the championship, 
Uh, I think, you know, common sense has prevailed, really. Yeah, I feel like if Vince was still in charge, he'd say, no, you're getting the Rock versus Roman Reigns. I don't care what you want. Is what's going on. Uh, yeah. But no, because, you know, they actually listened to people. They heard, you know, the outrage online, um, how the chance and everything else. They thought, you know what? They're right. We should have Cody versus Roman. Yeah. That's what we've been doing this whole time. Let's um, be fair here. Cody is the hottest property that WWE has right now. Easily. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know The Rock is getting booed because of Cody. The Rock is like yeah. the most famous movie star that's ever in, in the world right now. And yeah. He's getting booed <laughs> out of yeah. every single building because of Cody. The guy yeah. who was booed out of every single building in AEW. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Cody. Driven out of the company to then become uh nuclear famous nuclear popular like i'm talking i think john cena levels of popular yeah yeah i agree you know we had main you know we had actual uh you know news sites reporting on this stuff because you know the rock was getting booed so heavily <laughs> his whole yeah. everything changed because of, because of all this stuff online yeah all because it's, of cody Rhodes. yeah it's great I'm happy for him and that i mean it's Crazy to me how quick it's gone since the last WrestleMania to this WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, but the Bloodline stuff, don't get me wrong, it's not been as good this year as it was in the build-up to WrestleMania last year. Yeah. But I, I feel like we really are coming to the back end of it now. I do think we are going to see... Uh, uh, yeah, because we're going to get Jimmy and or Jay versus Jay and or Jimmy at WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think The Rock, in some roundabout way, costs Reigns. Yeah. Um, I, I think we are coming to the end of it. Or we're going to have some sort of internal bloodline civil war going forward. The title's out of the picture because Cody's the champion. And he's going to go and do champion stuff. And then we're going to have some sort of like internal bloodline war. Yeah. Um, it, with the Rock where the going to happen at some point. Oh, of course <laughs> it is. It absolutely yeah. is. And that in that internal sort of bloodline civil war, you could factor more people into it. You know, there's, there's the solo factor. He's going to come out of this or has to come out of it. I think looking um, because he's going to be the one to carry this on going forward. Right. So um, yeah, I, you know, I think Jay Uso is insanely popular at the minute. Yeah. It's huge. Ridiculously over. Uh, so I, I, the bloodline stuff isn't quite done yet, but it's going to move on to its next and final chapter after WrestleMania, because I do think Cody wins at WrestleMania. I think he finally wins and finishes the story uh, because if he doesn't, honestly, this year I'm going to fucking lose it. Right. Because last <laughs> year I was angry enough at yeah. Reigns winning. Oh my God. I don't think you've probably ever seen me that angry at wrestling. before. <laughs> probably not. I was, just, I was just laughing in the corner. I was like, of course that happened. Of course. Run. You're like, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. What am I? It's fucking stupid. He <laughs> just like, stood up out of his chair. <laughs> it was great. Oh, I was so <laughs> fucking angry. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 this year, right? I'm as old as WrestleMania. And wow. even I was like so annoyed that Cody didn't win last year. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was great. I loved it. Um, but this year it has to happen. They have to capitalize on it. I think the rock costs reigns in some roundabout way or stops solo from stops any sort of shenanigans from stopping Cody winning the title. And then in, then in enabling Cody to beat reigns and win the championship. Um, the rock stands tall with Cody in the ring at the end of WrestleMania, the rock gets some sort of bollocks moment. Cody gets his finally his crowning achievement, yeah, uh, which he deserves at this point, by the way. Yeah, and absolutely. then The Rock builds to maybe a SummerSlam feud or a WrestleMania 41 feud with Roman Reigns, then ending the Bloodline storyline completely. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's everything's everything's come to this. It's just such a great build up to you know the fi the final you know, the final boss of the Bloodline. Essentially, um, I yeah. saw someone describe uh, wrestling as redneck anime. And it's probably, <laughs> probably the most accurate description of wrestling I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, 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 I could see you that. Bosses, you turn up out of nowhere. You've got power levels. You've got the superheroes. You get defeated, but then come back, the power up, and come back. And it's like wow, that's literally, it's literally anime. <laughs> this the most 
yeah, it's the that is a very accurate description of pro wrestling, and yeah, I love it. I love it. I, yeah. I, I love where we're heading in WrestleMania, and I think WrestleMania looks looks great. I think Drew McIntyre beats Seth Rollins for the championship. Yeah, but I, I think Drew. Damian Priest cashes in on Drew McIntyre and wins the championship. Ooh, interesting. I love what Drew's doing at the minute. Drew's, you know, I like I like a heel that makes sense. Like he's he's been a babyface. You know, he's mm-hmm. Jay Uso's come back. Everyone's forgiven him, and it's like, what? <laughs> Do we not? Do we not forget what he's done? And yeah. Like yeah, we forgive him. It's like this is bullshit. Why is? <laughs> and you know, it, it makes sense that he's pissed off because he's been screwed over so many times. And yeah. now it's sort of like, and with CM Punk being out of Mania, it's been like, great. <laughs> I, I pray for this and it happened. So that's a great line. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think, I mean, obviously the, the, there was the whole thing of Drew McIntyre hasn't yet re-signed with WWE, but the rumors mm. are sort of pointing towards the fact that he, they are going to come to some sort of agreement. Personally, I don't actually think Drew McIntyre would flourish in AEW. Uh, I think yeah. he's a WWE style guy. Um, that's not me trying to shit on AEW in any sort of way. I just think that's how I see Drew McIntyre. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see him as very much a WWE style guy. Yeah, I mean the fact that he's in one of the main events of WrestleMania, uh, or main event like matches for the you know, football championship, uh, makes me think he's going to resign. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're not going to put someone who's going to move off to AEW like the world champion at WrestleMania no. biggest show of the year. No, not at all, not at all. Um, and he's done such a great job of building himself back up. Uh, to a point where he's just a tremendous heel. He's doing, yeah. I think, probably his best work in WWE so far. He did a great job during the pandemic um, as the babyface champion, but it got very stale very quickly, I think, uh, because, I, I don't know, there was just something about it that felt very cheesy about yeah. him. He was very much a cheesy type babyface. Yeah, it's a kind of generic good guy. Like, yeah, I'm for sure. <laughs> you know, I play with the crowd. I count down my number, three, two, one, play more. Yeah. So. It's like, no, we don't want this. But now he's playing like a very much a, a dickhead type heel. And I, <laughs> I I think it's great. And I think he's doing a very good job of it. Um, yeah. I would sort I mean, I don't know how I would feel about Damien Priest cashing in and winning. Yeah, I don't I don't think that happens straight away. I want to wait just a little bit. Because I know Money at the Bank isn't probably isn't that far off. And I haven't teased no. him because you know, the contract runs out of Money at the Bank. Um so maybe having teased them, having you need to cash in soon because you're gonna it's gonna run out. And haven't tried to, you know, maybe make that a storyline of having mm. des- desperately trying to cash in and failing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you know I because I do want to see Punk versus Drew McIntyre when Punk is back and healthy. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> and I would like to see Drew McIntyre have a good run with the championship. Yeah. Uh, a good heel run with the championship. Because you know, Damien the judgment day are heels. So does a heel cashing in on a heel really work all that well does it really get people hyped up for the cash-in i don't think it does yeah um and i don't think cashing in on cody is the right move but i just i don't think damian priest is quite at that level no imagine if he cashes in on, on cody like on the raw after mania oh, <laughs> <Christ. laughs> the internet would explode and i would love it i'd be laughing <laughs> oh I, look believe me dude i would fucking i'd go mental <laughs> Uh, but you know it's all looking very very good there's a lot of factors to take into consideration really with the money in the bank because yeah the, you have the heel on heel thing you have the Finn Balor factor I think there's something there where Finn Balor almost sort of costs him maybe you know maybe uh, the, there's a, costs him and then that leads a few between them yeah and but I I like the judgment day and I don't want the judgment day to break up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, same. You know, there's part of me also that thinks that money in the bank is a done done concept now. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I think I think it's done well for the times that it's been done well, if that makes sense. Like there's yeah. some really memorable moments with money in the bank, but there's been a lot of garbage with it as well recently. You know, yeah. the Otis That's, stuff. Yeah. Uh, Baron Last Corbin year. had it, I think. Yeah, he had it failed. Um, Damien Sandow, Damien Sandow. <laughs> yeah, we've had some good ones, and but yeah, the last few years, especially, have been not great. Yeah, uh, it feels like they, they've done it because they have to do it. I think it's a concept that could maybe be put to bed. 
Yeah. Because I, I honestly, I don't want to see Priest cash in and beat Drew, or maybe Seth beats Drew and he cashes in on Seth. Maybe that's maybe that's it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe Drew beats Priest, but that's heel versus heel, triple threat. I don't know. No, nah, I, I mean, I think the only real, when you think about it, the only real okay way to do it is for Drew to lose and Seth to win, and then for Priest to cash in on Seth. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're but kind that, of, the wait is too long, I think, for Damien Priest. I yeah, I think yeah, I agree with that actually. I think they probably have waited a bit too long. There's now time's running out and you don't want to cash in on Cody or Drew or Seth. <laughs> you know? Like, what do you do? You're not got time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It, uh, but you know what? That's another good thing about WWE at the minute. You don't know. It's not predictable. You yeah, have that's, absolutely that's no idea where some of this stuff is going. Um, you know, it looks like we're based on what we saw at Elimination Chamber in the men's Elimination Chamber. You know, Logan Paul costing Randy Orton the match. Are we headed into WrestleMania? Logan Paul versus Randy Orton for the United States title? Maybe. I said this on Discord, but I would love like a multi-man ladder match for the US title. Yeah, yeah, I would. A multi-man match for the US title, not the IC title, because I yeah. I, lo- I love Gunther in 1v1 situations. Agreed. Uh, I, I would love to see Chad Gable get his flowers and beat Gunther at WrestleMania. Uh, yeah. But I think, you know, you know, I think for Chad Gable, Chad Gable is a tremendous professional wrestler. He's a great talker as well. I don't think he needs the Alpha Academy gimmick at this point anymore. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe he does. And I'm just sort of thinking. Place. Yeah, it's a fun stable. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah, I agree. It is fun. But I would like to see Chad Gable maybe um, take it off Gunther and establish yeah. himself as a real, as finally establish himself properly. Yeah, me too. He deserves it. Who would be in the your multi-man at WrestleMania for the United States title? Um, I'd put Logan Paul. Randy Orton, yeah, LA Knight, yep. AJ Styles, yep. Kevin Owens, yep. Zayn. Okay, good. Yeah. Although, Sami Zayn versus Gunther would be great at WrestleMania. Yeah, that'd be great as well. And Sami Zayn's kind of lost, been a bit lost in the shuffle recently. It's yeah. kind of a I mean, it's a storyline, which is, you know, which is great, because they're <laughs> good at that at the minute. Yeah. Um, he had a good match against Shinsuke, which he won on Raw. Yeah, I've enjoyed Shinsuke as a heel. I've enjoyed some of the stuff yeah. that he's been doing. Me too. You keep losing though, which is a problem. Yeah, it's annoying, but I think I don't, at this point I don't think it's affecting him. Yeah. Um, I think they're booking it in a way where it's not affecting him, and I think he'll, I think he'll have a good run at some point. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, do you have a ladder match? You think at WrestleMania for the for the United States? Yeah, that'd be great. Bring back the multi man ladder matches for WrestleMania. That'd be awesome. That mm. one TLC or something like that. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I but, agree. It's so, for Gunther. Uh, or Sammy or Chad or someone someone like that. Yeah. And then Gunther uh, has to move on to the World Heavyweight title, right? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's time. He's definitely ready for it. Oh, God, yeah. Jesus. I mean, he's been the most consistent, one of the most consistent performers in WWE since he had that champ, since he got called up. I mean, everybody feared for him. I mean, remember when Keith Lee tweeted, oh, poor Walter. <laughs> yeah. When, when his name changed to Gunther. Yeah. And, but it's, you know, Keith Lee's fallen off the face of the fucking earth and <laughs> Gunther has been one of the best professional wrestlers on the planet. Yeah. Poor Keith Lee. I know. I feel for him. <laughs> I'd love to see him back in WWE as Keith Lee. Yeah, yeah me too. He left us at the wrong time. Just as Triple H has taken over. Yeah, um, you can say that for a few of them. I mean, look, I mean, a few yeah. of them are coming back. You know, Andrade back now, and I've loved the vignettes that they've been doing for Andrade on Raw. I think that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, if you, if what you read is to be believed, then Malachi Black will be on his way back once his AEW contract has expired, which makes sense. Same goes for Buddy Murphy. But their 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 partners work for WWE, so why would they not want to yeah. go back and work with? Especially if they're doing relatively nothing in AEW. Malachi yeah. Black's a singles wrestler, dude. He's not a, tri- a trios guy. Yeah, man. It's a, I mean, I love the House of Black. I love the faction. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I uh, do. Like you know, I like um, Brody. 
Brody King and uh, Julia Hart. I think they're both great. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd like to see them both back in WWE. Yeah, but we're it's... WWE guys, you know. We, we've never made any secret of that. Um, <laughs> we can't help it. No, we can't. And it, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, I do like AW. I like you know, I like what they do. You know, some great teams on there. Got you know, the acclaimed are awesome. You know, young yeah, I, I think I think they very show. much. I think Tony Khan really wants to book it as uh, a New Japan style show. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, but sure. Got why not? Uh, yeah, got um, what's his name? Will Osprey just been signed there. Yeah, he's it's he, great yeah, talent. Yeah. Oh, some unbelievable talent. But yeah, I think he wants it to be an American alternative to New Japan Pro Wrestling, and that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a place for that alongside WWE. I mean, you know. The wrestling in AEW is fantastic. It's some of the other stuff that's not been so great, but uh, sometimes in WWE the wrestling hasn't been fantastic, and the other stuff has been great. So he sort of balances it out. There's a there's a place for both AEW and WWE. They can both exist side by side. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you'll always get you know the the hardcore of one side and the hardcore of the other, and they both hate each other for for no reason whatsoever. And it is what it is, but. Yeah, I think I think WWE is in a very very good place at the minute. I think you know uh, who who have we so we got Becky versus Rhea at WrestleMania. Uh, yep. Uh, Bianca's left with nothing to do, which makes me think they're going to start bringing Jade Cargill in. Maybe that'd be cool. Obviously, you got Bailey versus EO. Uh, be great to see Bailey get a get her win at WrestleMania for the championship. EO's been a great champion, by the way. Yeah, he is great. So that's another uh, teaming her up with uh, the Kabuki Warriors. Uh, yeah, for sure. Great, great little team they've got there. Yeah, great little team, and uh, there's a, so there's a lot of good stuff going on across the board in WWE at the minute. The one thing that they still need to fix big time is the tag team championships. Yeah, they need to get new belts. They were, ages, ages and ages ago, they're saying, "Oh, they've got new belts. We've got new belts ready to go." Um, you know, they're testing them on you know TV, or whatever before mm. but it's still it's still nothing maybe they wait until after mania maybe they wait watch. until mania maybe they'll be like at wrestlemania okay right here we go it's a special wrestlemania here's a i i think you'll get a multi-team re- uh, tag team title match at wrestlemania i think you'll probably have diy in there pete dunn and tyler Bate, uh maybe imperium yeah and whoever, okay whoever the champions are at the minute i can't remember yeah uh, well finn Balor and Oh, of course, yeah. Dam- oh, Damien Priest, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Finn Balor, Damien Priest lose the titles at WrestleMania, then Priest potential cash in at WrestleMania. I can see that. Yeah. How good um, is it to see Tyler Bate finally on the main roster? Oh, and how good was their match at Elimination Chamber, by the way? So good. Incredible. Yeah, it's good that Pete's done, Pete Dunne is the bruise away again. Yeah. I like the name. I like the new Catch Republic thing. That term's been used to quite a bit in WWE at the minute, the Catch thing, because you've yeah. got the, the, uh, the Catch guys on um, NXT as well. Like yeah. the Gulak's faction. Catch Quarter Crew, is that the one? That's it, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, those guys are great. Um I like I keep thinking his name, uh, Winnie Meagle's son. Oh, Charlie Dempsey. Charlie Dempsey. I knew Dempsey, I couldn't think of his first name. Uh, uh yeah, I like he's great in the ring. He's a lot like his dad in a lot of ways. Oh, he's a he's a real throwback. I was saying this to Kay yesterday when we were watching NXT. Um, that he's he's got a very throwback look about him in mean, like in terms of the way he works and his body like you, you know what I mean by that like the way his body looks his yeah, body yeah. shape and all that sort of thing and I'm big into it I think he's very very talented um, I think he's got a big future ahead uh, but yeah I think in terms of the, the the tag titles at WrestleMania I think a multi team match uh, the Judgment Day lose them and yeah then Damian Priest with a cash in potentially. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, who wins the tag team titles is another thing. I, I would like to see Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate win them. Uh, I think Imperium would be cool. Uh, the, uh, it's getting there. The tag team division is taking there. It's, it's getting there. Yeah, honestly, I think any team, you know, any of those teams you mentioned would be good. DIY, Bate and Dunne. You know, mm-hmm. you know, but Imperium just have one set of tag titles. Stop carrying two lots of belts around. Yeah, it's just, yeah, there's no point. No. Not at all. Not at this point. Just uh, just one set of titles. And I think we'll get them. I think maybe at WrestleMania, that's where we see new tag team titles. Much like when we saw the... Um, when the Divas title was... Um, Divas. Divas. When the Divas title was sort of gotten rid of and they unveiled the new Women's Championship, which at that point was the Raw Women's Championship, if I remember rightly. Yeah. 
they unveiled that at WrestleMania for Charlotte to win. And yeah, maybe they'll do something similar at WrestleMania for the tag team titles. Yeah. And by the way, I played, um, I bought and played briefly uh, WWE 12 on BS3. Oh, uh, okay. Probably the tiniest women's division on there uh, in any game. Do you want to guess how many people, how many women are on there? Uh, I'm going to go four. Uh, almost six. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Six. <laughs> Crazy. That's the. I think WWE 12 is the only one I'm missing from my collection because I have all of them. Yeah. Um, I think 12 is the only one I'm missing on 360. I'll pick that up at some point. Cool. I'm missing a few. Um, I think it's seven. Yeah, seven, eight, and eleven. I'm missing. Okay. Oh yeah, I've got. Yeah. Uh, I bought eleven recently from a car boot. Oh yeah. I nice. bought like a bundle of Xbox 360 games that included. Um, oh yeah, I think I, I mentioned it before actually. Lost, Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. uh, World at War, Max Payne 3, and SmackDown versus Raw 2011. I got them all for like a four quid or something. Nice. Bargain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 12 is the only one I'm missing. Yeah. Cool. I like I like going back and playing old games. So I'd like to see yeah, me too. To see, you know, who was you know, looking people you might have forgotten who was wrestling mm-hmm. and rent. Like that had uh, Cody Rhodes with his mask. Yeah. Um, he's going to be in the new game, actually, as a DLC. Pre-order yeah, which deal. is really cool. Yeah, Stardust is in it as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool, I think. But I like uh, I, I like WWE at the minute. I like where it's going. I, I'm excited when I watch it. I think the pay-per-views are very consistent. Like Elimination Chamber, I thought was very good. Um, I thought it was, you know, some of the results, yeah, were fairly obvious, but they make sense in the grand scheme of things when you're building up to WrestleMania. But all what it did do was set up, stuff going into WrestleMania because obviously now you've got the AJ Styles and LA Knight thing, Logan Paul, Randy Orton and yeah, I, I think it's in a very good place right now. Yeah, I like that AJ Styles flew all the way to Australia just to mess with LA Knight. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Um, uh, we were talking about NXT in the group chat yesterday in the Discord. And yeah. I think NXT is good at the minute. The women's division is ridiculous. Yeah. Like the amount of women's wrestling on NXT is it's literally half the show. Yeah. Maybe even more. Good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very again, very talented, very talented roster down there. Yeah, very, very talented. You know, and across the board, you know, you've got the even the, the tag team division down there is good as well. You know, yeah. obviously you've just got Carl uh, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows have gone down there. Uh, I think that's potentially to eventually bring in Tamatonga, who has just finished up in a uh, in New Japan. So nice. and he is WWE bound based on what I've read on the internet. Cool. I think that's it's nailed on. Uh, I think that was always going to happen. And I think he, you know, he was part of the Bullet Club with those guys. So he'll be in some sort of faction with them. And then maybe sort of he'll be in the OC with them or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I like that they're sort of pushing Tony D'Angelo towards the NXT Championship. I'm a fan of him. Yeah, it's great. Big fan of him. There's a lot of really great stuff going on in um, in NXT at the minute. Obviously, you know, Bron Breaker and Baron Corbin are going to lose those titles at Stand and Deliver probably because Bron Breaker's on SmackDown now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really good fun. Really good <laughs> fun. But across the board, WWE is really killing it right now. It's not yeah. all great. It's not all great. There's still some crap stuff that happens. But for the most part, you know, I would say WWE is in the best place it's been in a long, long time. And, uh, you know, once this Vince stuff has, has passed and, you know, they can sort of finally move on from it, uh, I think it'll be in an even better place. Yeah, I agree. Did you see the stuff with Maxine Dupree, by the way? That's going around. I did, I, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah uh, I saw she, a, sort of like did. people booing her and shouting that she sucks and stuff like that. And I read something to say that she's had 12 matches, and that's not just 12 matches in WWE, that's 12 matches as a pro wrestler. Yeah, and it's, it's like we know she's been called up early, uh, probably too early, but that's not her fault, <laughs> you know. No, it's not her before. fault, not at all. It's just learning on the job, and yeah, you know, she's doing all right. Yeah, it's not this movement in the ring. It's you know, it's you know, a fair few botches, but that's going to happen. You know, when you wrestle through twelve matches, and it's fine. She's getting better, slowly but surely. Yeah. She's very charismatic. Yeah. yeah, she's a great character. I think she's yeah. uh, she's she does well as part of the Alpha Academy. Uh, they did well to integrate her into that after the uh, Maximum Male Models stuff that obviously just went down very quickly. Yeah, um, but think, you know, Mason Mansour did great. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been great, but obviously they've both been released and going to go and do other stuff, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, I think I feel for Maxine Dupree, and there's been a a lot of support for her from everybody 
and that, yeah. that's that's good. No, she'll she'll recover from this. She'll bounce back and she'll be fine. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's it's crap. Yeah, you know, but that's wrestling fans. Wrestling fans are dicks, man. They really are at times. But no, it's okay not to like someone. Just don't be an asshole about it. Yeah, they're, they're people as well. You know, don't be a yeah. prick. Exactly. Don't be a total prick. But you know, it's, it's you know, speaking of releases, like we mentioned before, Mason Mansoor. There's a you know, Mustafa Ali's gone to TNA. He's the X Division Champion. Yeah. He's doing pretty well. I knew he would. He's super talented. Yeah. You know, Mason uh, Mansour, you know, they on Twitter, sharing stuff all the time, what they're doing. They're, they're killing it as well. Yeah. Well, you know, they suppose the thing now, you know, being released from WWE isn't the be all and end all. We've been saying it for years now. There's other places to wrestle. You know, TNA's just rebranded to TNA. Yes, the releasing of Scott Damore from TNA is bizarre. Very strange. Uh, he even offered to buy the place. Yeah, like really? a financial backing and all sorts. Yeah. And they just, you know, they wouldn't do it. But. Yeah, TNA is back. Don't get me wrong. I I watched the the, the TNA pay per view on their first pay per view back, and it was it was just okay. I thought I, it was just okay. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and go TNA's back. It was absolutely awesome. It's back to peak TNA now. Uh, mm-hmm. It isn't. It's just okay. Yeah. Uh, now I'm, I'm sure it'll pick up over time, and it'll be fine. And it you know it still isn't ever going to touch where AEW and WWE are. It just isn't. It'll always be third place. Yeah. Agreed. You know, um, AEW's got great stuff going on. You know, like I said, they're, they're building a, a really great roster there. I think there's some there's some people that need to be trimmed from the roster. You know, and when we see the likes of Malachi Black and Buddy Murphy and, uh, sorry, Buddy Matthews is ignorant of me. Uh, <laughs> Keith Lee, I think, will, will go run his contract down. And I think we'll see some people are just better suited to WWE. Some people are better suited to AEW. And I think that's just the way that it is. That's not a bad thing in and not a detriment to any of those talents. I think it's just some people are better suited to different styles of wrestling company. Yeah, exactly. But wrestling in general is very, very good white right now. And uh, yeah, Sting's final match this weekend, by the way, in AEW. And yeah, uh, what they, they, you know, for all the stuff that AEW does, not great. What they have done is they've been very respectful to Sting and his legacy, and the, they've dealt with it right. And I'm really glad for that because thing is 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 amazing he's had an amazing career he's kept himself in just incredible condition throughout his career and he's been super consistent and i've loved him in AEW. yeah been great and uh yeah for him to sign off uh, uh this sunday at revolution uh good for him for for having this one final fantastic run in AEW alongside darby allen uh who yeah did a great tribute to sting in the players tribune and yeah that's that's awesome so congratulations on an amazing career sting and uh i hope we still see him around yeah me too maybe we'll stick around i don't know what i do but i don't know man- manage uh darby Allen, maybe i don't know yeah, but, maybe, uh... maybe just fades into the back maybe just doesn't do anything maybe it's just yeah. there for advice backstage in aw or not even backstage you know maybe it's just there is i don't know an yeah. advice giver. I mean, you can learn a, a shitload and how to maintain a career, a long, long career. Oh yeah, um, like Sting has. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, wrestling related, actually. I watched the Iron Claw, the movie about the Von Erichs. Oh yeah, it's very, very good. But my God, is it harrowing? Holy shit! Yeah, God. But More it's very, it. very good. <laughs> yeah, it is tragic. It's a, tr- it's a tragic tale. It really, really is. Um, but it's a very good movie, a very respectful wrestling movie, probably the best wrestling movie that there is. Cool. Wow. Yeah, it's very, very good. So, yeah, excited about wrestling at the minute, excited uh, for WrestleMania season. Uh, we're going to keep the Games and Graps podcast going as the Games and Graps podcast going forward. Uh, we try these different things. Things don't always work. You know, something about games was doing fine, to be fair, but it's just our decision yeah. to bring Graps back into it. Yeah, we miss talking about wrestling. Yeah, we miss talking about wrestling. And, you know, we'll as, as time moves on, we'll try and get the pre-shows before the pre-shows back. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll maybe try and do it for WrestleMania as our first one back. See how yeah. we see if we can see if we can do that. Uh, but, you know, as life changes, things change and it is what it is. But we're we're not going anywhere. We never went anywhere. <laughs> we just uh, had a break off. I had uh, some time off whilst looking after my newborn child who is coming up to two months old. Well, he's eight weeks old today. So wow. it's just crazy. Yeah. So yeah, 
as time goes on, we'll, you'll see us doing more and more stuff. And obviously, I've been doing stuff on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, Finn still got his YouTube channel. All the place, something actually. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, we're doing stuff. We're, we never, we never go away. We're, we're always yeah. here. But we don't know. I don't know how often we're going to do this. I think you know, at the minute, I think it's probably best to pen in tentatively, tentatively every other week. Yeah, makes sense. We'll do it as much so, as we can. Yeah, once every once every two weeks, I think it's probably going to be very is more manageable than me sitting here saying that I can commit to weekly because at the minute I can't because I don't know what happens week to week at the minute because life changes day to day right now. But yeah. uh, every every fortnight, I think we can do. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and yeah, other stuff will come. But uh, Finn, if you got anything else you wanted to talk about before we uh, before we sign off, um, I think that's about it, really. All right. Well, in that case this has been a brand new episode of the games and graphics podcast we are a video game and wrestling podcast the post across podcast services everywhere everywhere and youtube.com forward slash games graphs go follow us on social media the uh, uh, the links are in the description of the video and the mm-hmm. podcast uh, go join our discord same link is in the description of both the video and the podcast Uh, But for now, my name is Sunny G, and I've been here, as always, with Finn Steele, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. It's good to be back. Laters.